So as everybody can see, we have a very, very special guest with us today, and it's none other than former reggae boy, Dane Richards himself. Dane, how are you? How's the family doing? How are things? Yeah, yeah saying, how are you? How's the family? How's everything? Everything is good doing so far. Can't complain about anything, so just giving thanks. All right, cool, cool. I just wanted to reflect on your career. You know, a lot of people have been asking, where's Dane? You know, what's the latest? You know, because the last time we, we saw you in the National Colors, that was 2014, so almost 10 years ago. So I just wanted to reflect on your journey. So you can tell me where it all began in, in Mobe. You know, was, was football the first love for you in Mobe, the only sport you played growing up? Uh, yeah, football. Start track and field. I did a lot of track and field. Mm. And then I was some liquid and fast. I'm going to try the track. You know? But the football, the track could have been a football. Just we did a lot of football. So that take preference. But early on, I did a lot of running for my primary school and then for Cornwall. And then like, no, man, they went too fast. Let me try football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so even at Cornwall College, you did a little track and field. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was like the 100, 200. <laughs> yeah, I tried the, the 100, but I said, no, sir, they were not fast enough on me. So try 200. Yeah, that was working. And then I realized, hey, let me try four. Let me try everything. And I'm saying, hey, it's enough for me. Now. <laughs> but we just do it the off season football, you know. Coach always said, come on, you're fast. So let's go help the team. So I always go help out. Okay. So football was the number one. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. I understand there. So when you were at um, Cornwall College and you, you went on with the Da Costa Cup and Olivia Shield title, was it at that time you were at SEBA then or SEBA saw you at Cornwall and then rope you in? Actually, there was always interest from SEBA, you know, but mm. I played for my local community team called Black Diamonds. <laughs> yeah. And then it so happened that we reached the semifinals and guess who we're gonna play against Seba. I think they beat us four three, but after that game, I was a Seba player because I think I scored two goals that game. Yeah. As soon as they score I scored back and I'm like, no. Now we have to get a UT. So after that I think I went over to Seba. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. And growing up, were you always a wide player or you also played centrally as well growing up? I was, depends on what the coach wants and what the games, the, the game situation is. Because sometimes I can play up top, stretch the defense with my pace. And then sometimes I play right wing. It all depends on what the game dictates. Mm -hmm. But it's forward or right wing. Mm hmm it, feel, it felt like so much happened in that space of time, you know, playing schoolboy and then before going off to college, representing your country as well. Remember making your debut for Jamaica, the experience, what that was like as well? Yeah, I remember it was Carl Brown, man. I won't, I won't forget that man. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was, I went up to the under 20, I reached late and the under 20 was playing under 17. And I reached late because I think the country must go up. <laughs> so I reached late and I stopped out of Spanish stone. Prison over, that's the name of yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just come off the bus and just walk going. And the game was already like 20 minutes left. And the coach said, We take this thing for all right, change and go up on the field. And we go up on the field and put Carl Brown, Carl Gill. And I don't remember if Dozo was there. Mm -hmm. They were on the sideline. I'm mean, going from the last 15 minutes, one of the five minutes going to the last 15 minutes of the game. And after the game, Carbon called me across and say, Are we your man? I'm like, it's a, I don't know how to take it. I don't know if it's sarcasm or anything. I say, I was countryman this, you know? So I'm like, uh, What do you mean? I mean we're there all this time. Next week, you see that team at Chabra. I make sure so you deal with the things we, we manage. He would in paper say, so I started laugh. I said, yo, this I'm going to take my phone and close it up. <laughs> but he might look for me straight and say, we dead serious. Mm -hmm. And they say, everything just push up for like 15 minutes. I didn't even want to go because my mindset then time, I don't want to be a man. I'll be a tone man. I'm not going to know it. I'm bridging Dishan Woolery. I don't know if I know Dishan Woolery. I even say, go on, man. You never know, man. Go on. 
I mean, just go and go bail and just pack my bag and just go up on the bus, just like that. And that's how it start. And 15 oh. minutes, Carl Brown see me and just say, yo, make sure you're there at camp next week. You see no team of travel. I think St. Lucia, when we play St. Lucia, when they just build their stadium. And the next week, when they play, they go to St. Lucia and like, you get something like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Life is very, very yeah, like, yeah, unpredictable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, after that experience, went off to college, you know, playing in the States versus playing locally, did you see the difference? Did you see, you know, technically, technically the changes that you had to, to make to your game? Yeah. It's like you, growing up, you were just playing with some ball in Jamaica, play some ball. But then you, you start learning the tactical side, technical side, all of it. You're like, okay, I have to change certain things. And plus, in Jamaica, everybody fast. <laughs> everybody fast. So, okay, you, you know, you never really use, depend on them, pace, 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 pace in Jamaica. Everybody fast. So, it's more like skills and there's something. Like. When we go, you remember the first game when we go, uh, we were standing just into college. Mm -hmm. We stop over the ball, the body rock, and they try, and they try to sell it to me. And the coach called me sideline and said, what, what are you doing? I'm like, I mean, I look at him like, what did somebody ask me what i And he said, yo, with your piece, just push it. Try, all right, just push it past him. Listen to me. Just push it past him and see what happens. Next ball, I'm going to get to defend the runner, and I'm going to just push it past him. I was 1v1 with the goalkeeper, but just pass it and I go. I'm like, okay, because those guys wasn't that fast as Jamaica. Jamaica just knew if Speed, mm -hmm. yeah, here. Yeah. So after that, I think my mindset about this football, I just start use pace, 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 pace. Uh, so you just change. I'm just try all different kind of learn the technical side, tactical side. Over, over the the time, learn more of it. But pace take over when I come to the states. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah, as you spent, you said San Jacinto and also Clemson as well. Yeah, you yeah. weren't, um, you weren't like playing much internationally. You didn't get a lot of game time during that period of time. Was your mind on that, or was it just more on college and just learning the skills and eventually turning pro? Tell you the truth, when I when I came to America, it was just okay. I'm my little boy, I'm going to come on fire. I'm going to come on come on fire, but when I have no visa, this is my chance. Mm. Every opportunity we get, no matter what it takes, I'm gonna make you say. And that me tell me say when we come over that plane, I use an international airport. Mm. They say, me now go back to Jamaica and yes, me make it. I just that me tell myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna say any opportunity we get, no make sure say me make you say. I come over, me never know say junior college is, is not it. I think junior college is a big school because we never know nothing about America. And then I realized that Division 1 is where it's at. I'm like, oh crap, let me all reach a Division 1. I mean, how much hours I have to do to reach a Division 1? I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go balance the ball. And it, how do I do that? Can I think about 60 other hours, you know, to go to Division 1, you know. I mean, I'm going to cut off Jamaica visit, holidays, I don't know. Okay, two years, I don't know what is holiday or not, because I just be always, man. Be always. I don't come to Jamaica, I don't do nothing like that. Come on, I'm going to be one. So I put a wife at work. Some people don't see it and they say, oh, you got go to school again. No, I want to work. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. The sacrifice, you know? Sacrifice, you have to yeah. make it work, you know? Yeah. Wow. Quite a journey. And then when the day comes, 2007, and the second round of the MLS draft, and you hear your name, you just you must feel like all the hard work you put in paid off. Yeah, but I didn't have a, I was aware that I'm going to get drafted because the coach reached out to me and they said they trade their number, their first round pick, but I'm really doing well in the combine and I, they, they're praying that I don't get picked. Because they want me, the first pick they have is in the second one, and they want me. I'm like, okay. And obviously, they talk to other coaches and they're looking at me, but my only family I had was in New York. So I'm like, 
Jesus, please. I first time, maybe I want to get picked first. <laughs> Come on, God, New York, you know? So, and so happened that. I was in class, you know, and my teammates and my claims, so they knocked on the, the, the window, and I said, because they, they were watching it, but I was in class. They was watching the, the MLS job, but I was in class. So I was just sitting there in class. And the window, the door just started knock. It was all my teammates out there. They said, you get picked, New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was a special moment man, because the professor was going there like, why are you beating on the class? Why you get detention and stuff like that? And then they say, no, you just get drafted for the MLS. And the professor looked around and the class stopped. And it, just, it was a nice moment, trust me. Class stopped, everybody like, I you know, as a Jamaican, I like girls and finals, yeah, God, bro. Everybody, it's a different moment. It was really nice, you know, so. <laughs> Uh, everybody was fine and say we all go pro like it was it was just nice it was just nice, it was just nice. So, yeah wow <laughs> what a story what a story wow yeah, it was just so nice. amazing amazing and as you know a lot of people you know when you were at new york red bulls when they see the stars around you you know the likes of the Henrys, joel and pierre experience from europe roy miller's the, the one pablo angels into that into that even rafa marquez being in that team of, of stars, were they how are they just being in and around them in the dressing room and everything and on the field as well? Well, it was well, since I got to the Red Bull, it's not like I was fighting for my game. Since day one, I was starting. Because when I went there, the, the right winger was hurt. Mm -hmm. And after the couple of games, the coach came to me and like, unfortunately, that guy is hurt, but it doesn't look like he's going to get back his game. That gave, gave me more. Confident, and I would just keep going, going. Nothing would phase me anymore because I was just playing against all different kind of players. The one little moment where I said like phase me was when Harvey joined the team. To be honest, one probably I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I learned a lot from him. But when Harvey joined, cause I'm an Arsenal fan, you know. Yeah, and then watching my ears, and I, you know, and then this guy joined the team. I'm like, what the hell? Am I? Is this you know? That little moment, but I can't make that moment get too much because we still have to play, to play alongside him on the field. So, and then when he reached, and we start meet each other, everybody in the locker room said, "Hey, Gunners man, this you know, and your biggest fan." I'm like, "No, no, 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 he's a fan of me now." So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we get along really well. We get along, guy. When he always visit London and come back, I always get an Arsenal jersey. We had a good relationship and I don't have to feel. All right. Well, he's really cool. And he, and he like our culture. He really like our culture. So that even made. Yeah. I remember some morning I reached into the locker room here. So long time. You know what? Foreigners always play so long time dance and music. I know it's the latest. So me and some red rock the players that sit there. When we reach him, like, they know. You hear what I'm doing? I'm like, hey, come on, man. These songs are playing from the 1980s. But it was a nice relationship with him. So I enjoy it a lot. Yeah. You know he was a legend. You know he is a legend. So did he portray that or was just humble, humility, calm, his aura, you know? What was he like? <laughs> we all know. I really you don't know. Really, you, you know what I mean. He's... Mm. He's a nice person, don't get me wrong, but Andy feel he's arrogant because he can he can back it up. And you have to be like that. Most superstars, you have to be like that. And an article like last week, he said to, to Saka, if you want to be great, you can't be nice. I don't know if you see that article. You, you can't be nice. And he wasn't that. He's a nice person, but he wasn't nice. He, he want to win everything. Even if you're a juggle, he want to juggle more than you. Smart, so he want to win every single thing. No care what we are doing in a training. If he not win, a problem. I remember one time he was dribbling, you know, and the ball like, like barely touch a line or go over a line, but the coach called it out. But in the thinking out, oh, Jesus, a World War Three. Yeah, man. Just feel a little ball. Oh, it's not practice, you know. But that's the mentality. Practice is harder than the game. Mm -hmm. In... Like my culture growing up is was a game. Mess around in practice and I give him at a big moment. No. That's why those guys are so good. I practice at a big moment. Cause the game gets easier. <laughs> Trust me. So that's one of the biggest things I learned from him. 
you can't mess around him. Because most of it, like, in Europe, the roster is so big, <laughs> like 30 man they fight to make it 18. Yeah, so you're happy to put out every single day in a practice. And that coaching now that may I try to so but they don't really understand, but they will learn. Mm-hmm. Practice is the thing. Yeah, I felt that, that when you went to the cup final 2008, I think that squad, that was the best chance, you know, to, to win it. Um, before the Henry year, of course, that was just a great squad. Like every year, if you weren't in the playoffs, you're at least competitive, you know. So was it down to the coaching staff, the fan base, the talent? Because New York, you're always having them in a conversation. You know, it's a tough game, tough place to go. Red Bull Arena, that's the place to go, you know. Yeah. I just don't know, we can't just can't. Jump over that final early, no matter what season. Because mm-hmm. after me, they had a really good run. They win with support the sheet. But in the playoffs, even the last place team going to come and knock out New York. I don't know. I keep saying we're cursed. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Trust me. I don't know. Just, we just can't jump over that hurdle. Mm-hmm. We can't. No matter what talent they get, no matter what coach is there, I don't know. You just can't get over it. But yeah, as you say, we're always in the argument, but the argument always bumps quick, quick, quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then of course an opportunity came to to go to Vancouver. You know, for you, what was it? Is it like a change of environment or the club just decided for a trade, you know, during that time? No, my my, my teammate Carl Robinson, he was the assistant at Vancouver. Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> and while we were playing, he said then you know that I'm going to coach after and any team I go I'm going to bring it there but in my head I didn't remember that I didn't remember after the trade coming I'm like oh he called me I'm like oh my god this guy was serious <laughs> but the, the pre-contract to go abroad was already signed and everything but they Vancouver Vancouver didn't know Red Bull knew <laughs> so Red Bull was quick okay go to get a trader for the next following season, but poor Vancouver didn't, didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get a chance to tell them. It's afterwards, you now the news come out. They're like, are you go? And they were like, oh, and they did everything to keep me, you know, to tell them, trust me, every single thing. Because they gave me, a, they come up with a nice, I don't know what, but trust me, they did everything because they didn't know. I know I'm in the, they had seat like I knew, but I still came to the skill leave a few months to leave. But I thought they knew, but they didn't have no idea. That's why they trade for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> no, the million dollar question, Dean. <laughs> what happened at Burnley? One game and we haven't we didn't see much of you. Change of coach, change of leadership. Where everybody was mm-hmm. excited to see you in England, honestly. Yeah, yeah, I was excited too, but in July, when I signed the pre contract, I was so excited. Mm. In November, I was questioning if I should go or not. Why? Eddie O, the guy that I, is at Newcastle now, yeah. that's the guy that wanted me at Burnley. In November, I was supposed to go to Burnley December. In November, Eddie O got fired from Burnley for short dance. <laughs> That's the problem. But nobody really knew. They was like, oh, he might just go there and just doing things. But it was a, I wouldn't say disaster because it's a learning experience. Sean Dice have his players. He got, he get his players. I was part of Eddie O, the Newcastle coach, no plan. But he got fired. So that was the situation there. So every day I practice, if his player do... 90, me have to try 110. And not every day, not every day, we can do 110. So it was a, it was crazy. Yeah. And then the, 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 the FA Cup game I played in, it's fans that are chanting Burnley, what do you call me? Burnley Walcott. Because I was killing, in that if I was killing it. It come like I was, I wasn't supposed to be there because I was killing it and then for, some reason we got a red card and lose the game. We got a red red card and lose in the last last two minutes. They score on us. It should be a replay of Turf Moor, but we lost. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just I was having a 
beautiful debut because they were chanting. And just give me so I was just killing the left. Oh my God, it was a really good. Everybody was like, damn. And then after that, it was just, we got a red card, lose. Get in the league, he plays his, he play his players and all of that. And then, what's it was it? Yeah, it was, it was a good experience for me, though. Trust me, it was a good experience because I just wanted to experience it. And I was like, I wish things were different. And I went there and he always there and I got the chance that I wanted. But to go to practice, know that I'm like the, the fourth our fifth choice mm -hmm. every single day. We know within the set, yeah, because I see I'm the fourth to fifth choice. Mm -hmm. Something happened really at me. Injury, injury, injury for me to go on the field. Yeah, I know it. I I, I wasn't going to be naive think me I'll go there and just play now. Mm -hmm. After months, I'm the fourth and the starters are playing. No injuries, they're playing well. <laughs> no, we don't have to play. Let's say go. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, if you look at that Burnley squad here with you, it's some top quality players with you, you know, boss. Like exactly. Trippier that, and, and Trippier, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the right back and over here, yeah, yeah. Trippier was there. What's his name? Danny Ings was there. Danny Ings was there. I know that. I know that guy was going to be really good. Man, he was one of the nicest person there. Danny Ings. You know, Trippier, you know oh. Trippier was really nice. Trippier was really good. He was really nice. Yeah. Wow. And, and Danny Ings was, yeah, he was good too. Danny yeah. Ings. Charlie he was nice. Yeah, Charlie Aston is a joker. Yeah, that guy is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Charlie Aston, mm. Danny Ings, Trippier. They they welcome me. Cause they they like it they welcome me, like really welcome me. Wow. Yeah, those guys, but and they knew the situation too, because Danny Ings was in the same situation. Cause he was a player. To, trust me. Danny was and he was because he had like three knee surgery said and he was like depressed. And we use the reason there yeah, because was a plane, so we use a reason I like that. Mm -hmm. I, happy, I happy for him because he recovered me and then he signed for Liverpool and all of those stuff. So yeah. that's good. But that that whole experience, I learned a lot from it. You know, every experience I learned a lot from. Yeah. You know, I was you know, all the time. I I think if I had gone to England younger, mm -hmm. people started at England in their 18, 20. I went when I was 30, I think. Yeah, it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'd have to go and hit the ground running and playing week in, week out for to make an impact, I think. Right. Understand. Understand. Yeah. And I mean, it is something that a lot of people will never do in their life, playing the States and playing England, which is a pleasure, you know, playing two different environments, you know, two high profile <laughs> leagues. And now Norway, Scandinavia, that new culture, new environment. What was that core cool like? Because it's even further now. <laughs> Yeah, it's like six months darkness, six months light. Yeah, to go from Jamaica to that. And the summer in Norway is like, I have to jack it up. <laughs> and in Jamaica, I have my shirt off and put up my foot and drink coconut water in Jamaica. But in Norway, lucky, just indoors the whole time, unless now what? It was crazy. But the thing is, the assistant coach in New York, He's the one that was in Norway. And he's he, he I remember I got an email or a text saying, Hey, I noticed. I remember because he was the one that helped, he was the one when I got traded to Vancouver. He was there. So he know the situation. So he said, Oh, your coach got fired. I know that. How is it going? I realized that you're not playing. You can come join me in Norway. I'm like, uh and I, so we think about it, but deep down me like, hell yeah, me I'll go. <laughs> But I don't want to know because negotiation, I don't want to Because when you're well to go, negotiation is going to be different from when you act like, you know. So just call me agent ASAP, as in ASAP. They say, hey, this guy I know, I know him. Line it up. I mean, just deal with from England, I mean, just deal with me, visa and everything. Mm. And I soon get out of there as soon as possible. Yeah, because more and play, more and play, almost 30. I play more and play, more and play, but you know, I want to sit down and train alone. Yeah. So we just make it happen right away. And the first year they were in the, in Norway, they were like in the championship to go to the top tier. And I went there and I went to the top tier. And I asked them to score the goal to let them go to the top tier. So 
it was a nice experience. It was good. From England to there, it was a good Mm -hmm. and then, All right. And, really yeah. And from the, the international standpoint, you know, you're part of that great front three yourself, Cummings, Shelton. You know, when we saw that front three on the field, you know that things were happening, goals were going to be scored for you. You went to a couple of goal cups. You think we we could have gone a bit further in these competitions, perhaps a semi final or a final based on the quality that we had? Yeah, I remember we, we went and the, the one that I thought we could do it mm. was when US, I think US beat us in the quarterfinal. That's the, yeah, you see, you remember, that's the time. I think in that game, we were hot, man. Cause the rotation up front was fire. And me, Ryan Demar, John. yeah. Ryan Johnson, yeah. Cummins in the mix. Phillips, yeah. Luton, hey, we were, oh my God, all my teammates from Honduras and all of them, Costa Rica, they're like, damn, you guys are the best team in the Gold Cup right now. You're playing the artists, and then I don't know if I chicken with chicken out already against the US because we didn't show nothing in that game. <laughs> to be honest, to be honest, we didn't show anything in that game. It was just like we were hot, and then we just get cool in that game. And US, I know some of them. They were like, "It's gonna be a tough game. You guys are looking real good." And then we just going on. We just I don't know. Mm -hmm. CH fight. Mundo Kari is CH fight. We just didn't show up that game. We mm -hmm. didn't show up. Didn't show up that day. But, I mean, you know, there were some pleasant moments, you know, winning the Caribbean Cup three times for Jamaica. You scored in those games as well. How you reflect on those experiences as well. Same talent as well, as you know, but at least you have some medals around your neck from Jamaica. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Caribbean Cup, yeah. We, we, we show up well. What I feel it was wasn't easy because people always think Caribbean teams are just walk over. Hey, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It was like, yeah, you don't talk, but we always, most of the time, we come out and talk because it was, or the group that we had, man, trust me, that group, I remember that group. Even other day, I was talking to Rudolph, Austin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were talking about the times, and it was like, yo, that was a special group. But it's something, it always happened, and it happened every year. That group was like a family, and then when it reached to the next stage, now we get one far cousin. You know, like you have a family reunion right through the year. Yeah, yeah. The same same family group, and then all of a sudden, when I want a special event, here one far cousin come over there. So one one sister, whatever like, we come start coming, just like a national team. Yeah, you don't want me to get up. You don't want me to get up. And then one little sus, sus, this one little gossip, this, and then everything just spread out like this. That's the same thing I, I thought. That was, that's my opinion, and most of our players' opinion. It's always this nice little core, building a vibe, building chemistry, and then Mir say, all this someone have one grandfather out on Maroon Town, so he's jumping because he's my playing cards are coming. And he just start coming, and everything just start. Mm -hmm. The chemistry just start. And then we have to try to build one new chemistry now. But we've been in the last three years. Hmm. It can't work so fast. You can't, a football, it not work so fast again. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Nice. Other, team, other teams have camps mm -hmm. right through to the three years. But in the last month of the qualifiers now, we have new players. <laughs> yeah. And that was the situation. And then you know, I change. It's still a continue. And we expect there's no change. I would expect change. <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, so like you're you stopped playing a few years now, but do you still get a chance to like watch the watch the national team play, stream it online, watch the highlights? Of, co of course, of course, of course, of course, I watch it. Yeah, I watch it. Of course, I want more dress up in Jamaica and I watch World Cup. Of course, the next World Cup is in the US, you know. <laughs> yeah, boy, me, I mean, you and go go watch. So we are planning for it right now because it's in the US. We are planning like what we're going to do in the cities where we are going and start start with stuff. Because if three teams are ready in, this is our best start. If if we don't, uh, is that what I said? No, because that's negative. We when we make it, it's going to be nice. It's in mm -hmm. it's in mm -hmm. in the US, yeah. Mexico, Canada. It's in our region. Our time. <laughs> And you need to start. I have to know. You need to start right now. You know, we don't want to start 2025 when 
mm-hmm. a year before. I know we want to start. Because every day we reason about it. I know we want to start, to tell you the truth. Because US start already, you know. And they already qualified. You know. Mexico start already, and then qualify already. They don't have to worry about qualifying. They start already, you know. Canada start already, you know. We need to start. I mm-hmm. hope so we start already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I only mm-hmm. way possible. Mm-hmm. And just imagine you play that Red Bull Arena. Imagine at Jamaica having a game there. And you know the Jamaican diaspora. Yeah. Oh my God, yo. That's going to be sick. May I look forward to it to tell you the truth because mm-hmm. we just know we'll make it, but mm-hmm. we just need to start early. Mm-hmm. Uh, anybody where you think about it, I can't help you, get them in from now. Now wait till 2025 20, to get them. Get them from now. From now. We want to see them from now. We don't want no man the last round I qualified and make them debut. It's the most ridiculous thing. People that make debut in the last round. <laughs> that made no sense. That's their reason. Come here, that's a US coach, a reason. How is it possible you want to read somewhere and people making their debut? You never see them before. You only hear them playing, but they make debut in the last round. That doesn't make no sense. Make no sense whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you cannot make debut in the most important tournament in the world. You're making debut in the last few games. Yeah. Um... You find out, say, oh, this is my, you find out, say, this is my good be last three days. No. We need to find out for now if we can help you. But when I get into that, I want a long story. I'm get really angry when we start picking body. So let me continue the interview. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, just a, just a few minutes to go. Uh, a lot of people ask, you know, what's Dane up to these days? Is he coaching? Is he enjoying his life? Is he getting in badges? What's Dane up to these days? Yeah, man, as soon as we decide to say, you know, so I eat this, we start to make realize mm-hmm. right away. Because we know life is important. Some people don't believe in that, but we know it's important. And that, for sure, is really important. So right now I'm coaching at, uh, I think it's the largest private school, international international school in the US. It's called Audi. Yeah, so I coach all the, the teams, all the middle school, and I'm an assistant coach for the high school. But it's not, it's mostly French players. I, I coach mostly French players. Quality, yeah, there. You know, some of them are playing and then come because international school, some of their parents work like some crazy jobs, some nice jobs. So they travel with their kids and then their kids come to school. But most of them are French. So it's really good. It's really nice. So that's the, that's what I'm doing right now. Okay. Which, which state is that? In the States? Houston. Houston. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Houston, Houston, Houston. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. Nice, nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. As you as you know, you know, we have a new coach as well. I'm sure excitement is, is building, you know, Nations League World Cup this year. A busy, busy year. And as you said, we'll get the passports now. It saves time down the road. <laughs> exactly. And now, yeah, everything I've been doing, I think we would learn from now. We would learn now. We have to do everything early. We can't wait. Can't wait in over the years. Causes failure. So I watch few of the games. Uh, whatever the coach is doing, it seems like it's working. <laughs> I watch the game against Argentina, Jamaica. And I was sitting, that's it. I'm talking the World Cup champions. And I think we had a chance. In the game, I watched the game. I think we had a chance. We got some, when it was 1 0, I think Leon Bailey got a chance. 1 1, different, different, different game. I was watching the game. Everybody thinks that, yeah, Jamaica look good. <laughs> we look really good. And then Mr. Messi decided to come on and just spoil it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we look, we, trust me, we look good right through. There, there's obviously room for improvement, but knowing where we were, we look good in that game. The thing is, the biggest thing is consistency. We, we look good now and then we look like this or that. So, if we can look good three games in a row, then mm. we see a little improvement. We know I look good now, and then the next five games, I look good, and then we look good. A little consistency, and I think we can jump over the next early you know, to reach. Mm. And, you know, what you think about the front three? I spoke about you, Ryan Johnson, Shelton, up top, Omar Cummings now, Leon Bailey, you know, in the mix, Antonio, Omar Hutchinson, that was at your club, but now at Chelsea. 
you know, how you look at the attacking line now as somebody that represents the country already. Hey, that's what I was worried about. I was worried Or top three, hot. If we don't show up hot, because you don't mention Nicholson, I may rate him highly. What was that? We tell the truth, we think say if we always depend on the field. In my opinion, if we always, that man, even if he miss, my man, they always say, he might miss too much, but guess what? No? This man always in the position to get the chance. Sure. If he score, even if he miss, he more in the position to get chances. I just think if he always depend on the field, who come if he always depend on the field? That's that my opinion. This guy is a, he's a goal scorer. He is a good scorer. Me, me rate him highly, to tell you the truth. Because we know Antonio, we know Leon Bailey, we know all of them. We know what I do at West Ham, and we know what we want them to do for Jamaica. Can both of them chip in and give us some quality moments? We're going to make a huge difference going forward. Mm -hmm. And then we have Nicholson, we know, we know him will score. If we get 15 chances, if we only score five, but we know him will score. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we know him will score. So, really, rotation, we like it. Really nice. Really nice. Mm -hmm. Now, behind him, though, the three, we just need a consistent midfield and if we provide, so then have to come back too far. Because most of the time, we see them way back and then we come back. Yeah. So, if we have that three that can cover them and supply them, I mean, I'll be so at one. Murito, and you know, mentioning Burke. Poor Burke. A brother that can score a goal, you know, he come like a, he come like a Lebron James for the team. He does powerful and you know? Yeah, so. We have, I mean, I say, we're attacking him. He's just, he's really good. He just really keeps something shit and give them a chance to win the game for it. Mm -hmm.